any organization that, that, that wants to innovate, wants to be prepared to innovate, has, I think has to have a, have a few things in place. One is, and perhaps the most important thing, is methods for having an open mind. I mean, being, uh, a sense of inquiry, of curiosity is, is essential for innovation. And the, 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 the quickest way for kind of removing curiosity, in my, in my opinion, is to, is to have organizations that are too inward facing, that don't spend enough time out in the world, particularly with, uh, with their customers or the people they would like to have as customers or the parts of the world they would like to have customers in. Uh, but, but a sense of curiosity and openness, um, a sense of empathy for the world, for people whose problems they might be trying to solve. That's essential. A second thing that's important is uh, an ability to create spaces uh, where trust can happen, where risks can, uh, risks can get taken. Uh, we, ten we tend in our sort of operationally minded uh, view of the world to try and mitigate and design out as much risk as we can, but if you want to innovate, you have to take risks. And, and to take risks, you have to have some level of trust within the organization because people get penalized for failure, particularly the kind of failure that's most useful, which is where you learn a lot, uh, then, uh, then they're not going to do it, in which case you're not, you're not, going, to get in, uh, you're not going to get any innovation. We do have a, a very broad uh, kind of range of uh, sectors and industries and, and design problems and innovation problems that we try and take on. And, we like, and the way we like to think about it is we come with a deep expertise in how to innovate and, our, and we partner with our clients who come with an expertise about their, about their industry. And we come with uh, what we might call a beginner's mind. We come with an open mind to, how, to what the possibilities might be. And that can be quite useful. Now, it's not always useful and sometimes it's useful to have expertise as well. And there are certainly some industries that, uh, like healthcare, for instance, uh, financial services, another one that we've, we've done a lot of work in and where we've built up some reasonable expertise over the, over the years, and we certainly try and move our no the knowledge around our organization the best we can. But we do rely somewhat on the value of having an open mind when we approach a, we approach a new question. I think that's perhaps the, uh, the reason that, we, uh, that, that we, 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 we succeed in working across a, a lot of different industries. We're also insatiable in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, looking for new problems to tackle. And, uh, and, we, and we have, uh, like many creative organizations, sort of severe, severe attention deficit disorder. So we like to work on different things. We like to tackle new challenges. So, so that kind of drives us a little bit as well. The creative process is not what many people think it is, which is all intuitive. Uh, uh, the intuition is a result of large amounts of uh, input, right? And that input, if it's going to be useful, is at level some, at some level of pattern recognition going on, which means it's some level of analysis, right? I mean, it isn't necessarily sort of analysis in a, in a numerical sense. But you know, we go look at a lot of people. We do a lot of ethnographic research, for instance, a lot of anthropology. That's not, uh, that's not kind of numeric analysis, but it's a lot of information. And it's that information that then comes together to, to actually inform the intuition um, of, a, of a creative team. And what I believe that as human beings, we're still relatively uniquely able to do, in other words, the machines have not caught up yet, is that we're able to synthesize large amounts of information and make what we think of as intuitive creative leaps. What we're actually doing is we're just synthesizing lots of data and, and we're coming to a point of view about that. And, uh, and, and that's where the creative leap happens. And obviously that's the, ultimately the sort of the payoff of the creative process. But if you don't feed it with lots of data, if you don't feed it with lots of information, then it's rare in my, in my, in my view that, uh, that you get the interesting creative leap. I have quite a lot of empathy for our clients because, because I found running our own organizations, it's actually really hard to keep innovating all the time around everything. Now, we do have an extremely kind of emergent culture at Idea where people are coming up with new ideas all the time. Um, we're definitely more of a kind of a thousand flowers blooming kind of organization than we are sort of a driven from the top. We're going to innovate here and then we're going to inno innovate there. Uh, my job is more as a, is to try and help and encourage us to sort of do some pattern recognition across all of that stuff and try and imagine where the places where we might focus more of our resources. But, um, uh, but I suppose the thing that I most try and do is to encourage people to remember to ask all the same creative questions about our own process as we do about our, as we do about our clients. Easily said, not always easy to do. Um, and uh, 
you know, you have to give some time for that. You have to remember that, like any like any organization, if you get into an operational mindset where we just we're doing the job, you for, and then you don't give it. Then then it's easy to forget about innovation. So, um, you know, we we have a constantly we're 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 putting resources aside for teams to go and work on things for the. Just because we're interested in learning about them, not necessarily because a, a client's paying for them. So doing your own R&D, even in an innovation organization, is really important.